So I got to thinking about how and why so many creationists have such flawed ideas about how things like abiogenesis and so-called macroevolution work. For example, when we get people like Kirk Cameron showing us pictures of that infamous crocoduck, we realize that there's a bit of a gap between how evolution is understood and portrayed by creationists and what it, exact, what it actually is. There have been a number of straw men thrown up by Christian apologists and especially by so-called creation scientists who should know better. These people say that naturalistic evolution is akin to simply random chance forming complexity. This argument takes many forms, but the one that is very possibly the most popular is called Hoyle's 747 analogy, or the junkyard tornado. Fred Hoyle, who is credited with creating this idea, basically stated that naturalistic evolution is akin to a tornado sweeping through a junkyard filled with scrap and through random chaos assembling a fully functioning 747 jet. Of course, that sounds ridiculous, and to a person who understands abiogenesis and evolution via natural selection, it is immediately identifiable as a flawed analogy. Natural selection isn't a totally random process. It encourages the procreation and preservation of genes that are particularly suited to particular environments. Though there is an element of chance, it is very logical and not the random process that creationists often paint it as. A far better analogy would be this. Imagine the Latin language millennia ago when it developed in the Italian peninsula. Eventually, over time, some of those Latin speakers travel northwest into modern France. Others head to the, to the Iberian Peninsula, others head to Eastern Europe, and still others stay in Italy. And over the centuries, each of these groups of people adapt the basic forms of Latin to suit their own needs. With each generation, each of these groups tweak the language slightly until two millennia later, we have the distinct languages of French, Spanish, Portuguese, Romanian, and modern Italian. All are distinct from each other, to the extent that in all likelihood, an elderly woman who has lived her whole life in Spanish-speaking Mexico will probably not be able to hold a conversation with a child who has never left the farmlands of northern France, even though they speak languages that are closely related and have a clearly recognizable common ancestor. Even more, if we were to zap them back in time to ancient Rome, they would likely not be able to talk with people speaking so-called vulgar Latin, even though it is the direct ancestor of their own languages. Now, each of these languages is complex and nuanced and filled with subtle variations, right? Yet would anyone make the argument that their complexity is so intricate and so subtle that they couldn't have resulted from time and continual adaptation? Would anyone make the argument that they had reached their end point and had stopped evolving? Of course not. We understand that these complicated languages are examples of emergence and that those ancient Latin speakers weren't planning on creating these languages, they just sort of happened over time. And this is a much stronger analogy to how biological evolution works. It's the principle of emergence where complicated things can come from simpler forms and where a bunch of small changes can, over time, add up to big ones to such an extent that something completely new and distinct could be created. Anyway, I thought I'd share that.